Hi, this is uh, again uh, Unity Web TV from Oslo and Unity Center. We still have Justus uh, Pavonski here, and uh, this is part two, where we I want to talk a little bit more about the ego, enlightenment, and different things around these things. Um, I just go on and ask um, Justus about uh, what is. Uh, why do we have why do we have ego when the true thing is to be enlightened? Can you tell me that? Well, first of all, I'd like to challenge this concept that any of us have an ego. In a sense, to ask the question why about anything invites a personal interpretation. Why is one of those questions that can go in any direction and you can never say that it's wrong because whoever has that particular interpretation is going to to have attachments or experiences that that make that interpretation real for them in in some way or another. So what I'd rather say is that this this process that we call ego and I'd, I'd like to invite our viewers to um, just entertain for a moment that to, that ego is not a noun, a thing, but rather a process that we try to make into a thing. A process, it's more like a verb. It's more about doing. For, for many years, I've come across this, this duality uh, that is very prevalent in the so-called spiritual world, where they say, on the one hand, we have love, and on the other hand, we have fear. And that between fear and love, or hate and love, uh, there is a battle between light and dark, and that eventually, at some point or another, the light will win over the dark, or there will be some magical synthesis that will bring us to a higher level of unity and understanding. What I'd like to say to that is that rather than having fear being the, the opposite pole to love, I would say that the need for control is the opposite of love, which I would interpret as being freedom, of, of being pure innocence. And so the question then becomes, what, what is this need for control? Well, every moment as it unfolds in this magnificent illusion that we call reality, what we call the universe, what we call our, our planet, our home, these things that are going on around us, there are dangers. It, by buying into this concept that I have a body that can be hurt, I can, I can stub my toe, I can fall down some stairs and break my neck, somebody could push me or hurt me or call me a bad name. And so, in order to uh, cope with some of the, the pains involved with these sorts of things, uh, we develop defenses. We develop a need to try to steer things to be safer and calmer and more relaxed, more happy. And, and it's that process of needing to control things that this concept of ego arose in the first place. Now, ego is just the Latin word for I. So this concept that I am I and you are you, this duality, I am not you and you are not me, becomes what we, we define as ego, as this, this separate individual alone in this scary universe. The fact of the matter is, is that at, at the bottom of this onion that you can peel away as you go through a process of self-inquiry, as you, as you continue to ask, who am I? What is my true nature? Who am I? Who am I? What am I? As you go deeper and deeper into that process and peel away, I'm not my body, I'm not my feelings, I'm not the things that I've done, I'm not the things that my father said I was, I'm not the things that my teacher said I was. I am beyond all of that. I transcend all of that. And at a certain point, and this is something that just because I say it doesn't really mean anything until you have a direct understanding of, of yourself as, as you going through this process. 
you get to the point where there's really just nothing there. There's absolutely nothing at the center of an onion. You peel away the last layer and there's nothing there. So what does that mean? That I am nothing? Well, only in the sense that as soon as you try to describe things with words, you're putting on a layer of the onion. And as so, so in order to get to that point where you, you know your true nature, you know the truth of the truth, the awareness of awareness being aware of being aware, you get to the point where there, there's nothing there. So if there's nothing there, what is it that's aware? Well, only that, only the beingness, only the awareness. There is no other phenomena there. There is no light or dark. There's no good or bad. There's no up or down. There's no in or out. There is just awareness being aware of being aware. So it becomes really, really tempting to ask, but wh why did this happen that we forgot about this? Why, did, why does this happen that we've created this incredible universe around us in order to, uh, to be so far away from this, this remembrance of who we really, really are? And I, I, I really don't know what the, the answer to that question is. I, why becomes an interpretation? I, I guess the most honest, pure, innocent answer to it is, it is because it is. We have all of this because we have all of this. And when I was really rather young, somebody, maybe even laughingly, said to me, well, I think the universe came about because God was bored. And maybe it's just as simple as that. Not that there is a God, but it, it, that, that can be a metaphor or a symbol for this awareness being aware of being aware. Now, in this world of phenomena, as we identify with our bodies, as we identify with our pains and our pleasures, we get to the point where we really start to think that you're good and, and you're bad and, and, and that we have to do these things to save the planet, to wake up, to clean things up, to avoid wars, and all of these things. And I'd say that within the world of phenomena, within the universe, within this that we perceive through our senses, there is a level of reality that I can't yet, who knows if I ever can, walk in front of a truck that's coming at me at 100 kilometers an hour and survive that. There are certain limitations within the framework of this manifested universe. So within that, there can be all kinds of variables. There's good and there's bad. There's a, a polluted planet or a clean planet. And within that universe, within that amusement park, with on all the different rides, the dramas, the humor, the pain, the pleasures, the bliss, the, the, the um, connections to God or the connections to evil, whatever it is, all of that is playing out and it just is. It is because it is and we can either buy into it or not. Now, when you get to the point of awakening and you're aware that awareness is aware of being aware, and you start to realize that everything around you is that. There is just this oneness. Because in that emptiness, in that nothingness of peeling away the onion and getting to the core, that there's nothing there. In a sense, at the very same moment, you realize that that means that you are also everything at once. That that I-ness is inseparable from everything else. So there is no separate Eustace and separate i -nai. There is an I-ness that encompasses both. And so when we talk about the ego, we're talking about a process of saying, I am not you and you are not me. There's a separation between us. There is a gulf between us. But the reality of it is that there is no gulf. Beyond the illusion, there is nothing separating anything from anything. And so as far as the ego is concerned, to get back to this concept of control, trying to control this, or trying to control the outcome of that, whether it's through very, very militaristic manipulations and, and convincing people with powerful language patterns, or whatever it is, or even just trying to control things by giving somebody a flower and hoping that they will smile in return. All of this need to control is buying into this concept that we are separate individuals. 
And so in order to get closer and closer to this awareness awakening unto itself, you start to let go of the need to control anything. As you let go and surrender more and more and more to, for the need to control, just give up all control, closer and closer you get to freedom, the closer and closer you get to innocence. And in that innocence, you start to see the true nature of everything, which is that everything is one. And within that oneness, there is, it's like a diamond with millions of n different little um, cuts in it. Have you been there? Been where? In this diamond. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would say that we are all there. I have had really clear connections to this understanding. This and, and, and it's not even just an understanding. It's not an experience. It's not a thing. It's just suddenly seeing that what is, is. That beingness is there and that's it. Yes, you just described something sounds like enlightenment. Uh, I was also why we started with why do we have the ego? Is uh, to get to this enlightenment, you have to use the ego to um, think about what to do to get to enlightenment. You can't just let everything go and suddenly you're enlightenment. Well, there is this concept. And, and it's particularly strong in, in most cultures of the world that we need to do things in order to achieve things. Yeah? And that by doing a certain process of doing a certain process, whether it's to go through university, by applying for a job, or playing a certain way on the field of sports, or whatever it is, that by doing, we will achieve goals. And by not doing, we won't achieve goals. It's really amazing what human beings are able to achieve when they let go of doing and drop into being. When you are completely in a state of being and not doing, that doesn't mean that things don't get done. It just means that there's no longer a need to control what is getting done. You surrender to the doing. And so as, as far as the, your question is concerned about the ego, I would say that the ego doesn't have to do anything. In fact, the ego, if it was a real thing, um, uses the doing to stay there. Yeah. It's by surrendering to being and not doing that the ego reveals itself to be the illusion that it really is. Um, Jesus, the uh, time's out. Can, do you have a message to the people? Uh, I will just uh, tell that uh, Jesus is going to have this satsang on December the 9th of June. And uh, it's 2011 now. So maybe people in 50 years listening to this. So June 9, 2011. So do you have a last uh, message to the people, uh, to the world? Well, I personally don't have any message at all. Uh, <laughs> That's the message. <laughs> my phone is ringing, and I'm going to turn it off. Um, basically, you are already there. Every individual, everything, every atom in the universe, every fraction of this universe is already there in truth, in the absolute awareness of being aware. And no matter what you do, no matter how good or evil you are, you're already there. The rest is interpretation. The rest is trying to control that which is not controllable. Thank you very much, Jesus. This is very interesting. I'm looking forward to putting it out on the YouTube. This is my pleasure. Okay, this is uh, I and I from uh, Unity Web TV. We're closing down now. And in some minutes, this will be on YouTube. Bye-bye.